I'm Bernard Crawford. I am a thoracic surgeon. What I do in this institution is to see patients who are referred to me who have lung cancer or are suspected of having lung cancer, and I evaluate them as to whether they would benefit from surgical resection. The ideal patient would present to me with all of their clinical staging completed. If in fact they come to me, that generally means that they have been diagnosed as having limited disease that is localized only to the lung or within the chest cavity because at that point they are surgical candidates. Basically, before surgery, we want to be sure that we do things as safely as possible. We do a very extensive pre-surgical evaluation, not only of their pulmonary function, which tells me how much lung I can remove and still have them feel normal after the surgery, but also their cardiac function and any other medical conditions would point us to look at those areas as well. The surgery that we do today is lung cancer resections primarily for lung cancer but it's done in a different way than it's been done over the years. We've been able to develop minimally invasive approaches to do resections for lung cancer. So rather than the large incisions that we used to use years ago, which involved spreading the ribs and <clears throat> working with inside the chest uh, with instruments, today we use smaller incisions, less invasive techniques, either with the use of a camera and video assisted thoracoscopy or with robotic surgery. I can tailor the operation that I do in removing their lung cancer to ensure that they will feel comfortable with regard to their breathing once they've recuperated. Additionally, with the minimally invasive techniques, small incisions, no rib spreading, for the removal of the cancers that we now use, patients have a much smoother perioperative course and are back to their normal physical functioning very early, usually by three to four weeks following the surgery. In the discussion before surgery, we talk about the possibility of the cancer returning even after it's resected. And after resection, we get additional information. We get our surgical stage of disease. That will tell us more information about the cancer itself, but also will tell us about the status of the lymph nodes that we resect at the time of surgery. If they have more extensive disease found on this evaluation, then those patients require adjuvant, that is, post-operative chemotherapy. Adjuvant chemotherapy simply means that you give chemotherapy as a preventative to prevent recurrences after surgery is done. We know now for a fact that if you have a stage 3A lung cancer, that's the cancer that starts in the lung and travels to the lymph nodes in the mediastinum on the same side as the cancer, you would benefit from getting chemotherapy after surgery. If you have a stage two lung cancer, you would also benefit from getting chemotherapy after surgery. And if you have stage one, the benefit is either very small or non-existent. With that advanced stage of disease, the chances of the cancer coming back go up. And that's why they get the adjuvant therapy, but their chances of the cancer coming back remain somewhat elevated. So that is discussed before the surgery and also in the post-surgical evaluation when patients come to see me for the first time. We do review the pathology report and I do advise them if they should get chemotherapy or less likely radiation therapy. I don't think there's anything better than um, getting rid of a lung cancer. You know, it's, you take these patients to the operating room, technically it's interesting and it's fun to do. There's a lot of good teaching that goes on with the fellows. Um, but taking care of these patients, getting rid of their lung cancers, following them for five years, and then saying goodbye, cured. That's the best.